All right, we found all the damn kids. So we need to move on here. And the guy... We need to go and get a meeting with what's-his-name. Where the hell's he at? He's in one of these buildings, right? No. Magnificent Mar... <laughs> Mr. Marlock. Well, maybe we're selling something. Oh, okay. I knew that was an option, just fight the fucking guy. <laughs> Why the hell did I have to wait? This, uh, battle music's a little goofy. Well, oh, okay, I don't know what kind of threat this fella is. So maybe I should just pull out all the stops, because I don't think this is the beginning of a dungeon. I don't think this is the beginning of a dungeon. So I might as well expend all of my, uh... MP and whatnot in this fight, and I can go and rest at the end. Plus, like, these... These, um... Battles with the goofy music tend not to be, like, the most difficult anyway. You know, it's... it's... I think it's cool that they added these extra animations and stuff for reused transformation of the dragons and all that. There's only so many times you're going to watch this before you get tired of it. What do we got? See how much power his uh, regular attack can deliver. You know, I can't remember. Did I visit a shop and try to upgrade my armor and weapons and stuff? Hmm. Let's try to get a uh, combo going here. I still don't know how to do this, but we're going to find out. Wow. Okay. There's no combo. That looks cool. Alright. You're much better off just doing physical attacks with him. Probably with Ryu also at the moment. does quite a bit of damage if you can, um, well, less damage than Ryu in his dragon form's physical attack, but, I mean, compare that to, what's her physical attack gonna be now? I apprentice, oh, gee, 16. I apprenticed her with a master who lowers strength. So, she's gonna, well, apparently she already has fallen behind the curve. I mean, she was a reasonable attack power for a little while. Not anymore. She's definitely going to have to use her magic a lot more. But she does a pretty good attack if you use magic. Of course, the downside of that is when she runs out of MP, she becomes useless. But that's... She's more effective than um, Nina from Breath of Fire 3, who was... Oh, they tried doing the same thing, but she was... Still a fragile character, but she never had the kind of physical strength to do good attacks. This guy's doing no damage. <laughs> she never had the physical attack to... Not uh, one. <laughs> to do any kind of physical uh, damage with her attacks. And her magic, she could run out of magic, and it can be somewhat useful, but it never really seemed to be hitting all that hard. So, it was like... Breath of Fire 3, Nina was just one of the weakest characters in that game. Or the weakest. You were watching that whole thing?
Nice animation there. Ha! <laughs> Oh, Nina stayed behind? <laughs> I hope he means, like, scrub the floors. <laughs> Alright, so... This Murloc fella knows where Nina's sister went, but, but, is unwilling to tell us until we find this merchant's, the thief who stole something from this merchant. Nina stayed behind. Uh, hopefully I'll, what the hell's a jabbergrass? <laughs> Oh, do I have the... F oh, wait, no, I do have a fishing rod. Hmm. Alright. Huh. You know, I don't know if I, uh, spoke to all these people when I came through. I don't think I did. There was a lot of this kind of stuff in the previous games. Like, Breath of Fire 3, there were lots of instances where you went to a town, and what you really should just be doing is getting through, and the town itself doesn't have anything to do with the story of the game. You're just trying to get to the other side of it. Like, when you got to the, the port city of Rapala, all Rapala is is a stop gap in between um, your destination which is Angel Tower and where you came from which was Wenda Windia well you um, you end up there and turns out you can't get through because of uh, the ship is missing and the volcano took out the oh I'm gonna read that oh, man I'm looking forward but I saw a fellow with a big heavy and we're shouldering out of the town on the eastern highway okay that's a place to go 
But anyway, you couldn't simply uh, get to Angel Tower because you had to do all of this, these different things. You get drug into a number of different things. You have to go and you have to go and sort of do this sort of love story thing with a guy and a girl there. Then you had to go and repair a lighthouse. Then you had to go and take a tunnel through the volcano to finally get to the other side. And it feels like, yeah, you should have been able to just do that from the beginning. But the game pulls you into pulls you into these uh, little side stories. Uh, Eastern Highway, that's where I have to go. Where's the exit to this town? Man, I, it is frustrating, a lot of the, uh, the layouts of these towns. Because, I mean, you have this nice camera that you can rotate in all sorts of ways. But all the towns I've been to so far have been cramped and clustered, so you have to rotate the camera around almost constantly to find your way through. As opposed to, again, bringing this one up, Breath of Fire 3, which had a, mu a rotatable but really fixed camera. But large open environments that you could um, that you could move around in freely, and you don't feel cramped or tied up. Hmm. Not sure what. Uh, I feel like there's something I have to do with this. There we go. <laughs> This thing makes a lot of weird noises when moving. Is this where I came in at? <laughs> yes, it is. <laughs> uh, the camera is more free. Are there no battles here? The camera is more free in this than Breath of Fire 3. But, I mean, I would compare this... Oh, there's a fight. I would compare this camera movement more to... Um, what we saw in like Xenogears, where you have the camera that can rotate around uh, not quite freely. I mean, it, it rose on like a quarter axis. Wow, that thing's powerful. But you're not uh, you're not tied up into the camera being locked in any particular location. You know what? I was gonna. I'm an idiot. I was gonna go and um, rest up in a. I was going to go rest up at the inn. Or camp, whatever. Well, I might as well see what my characters have to say. She as an Urshan. It's funny, like, I haven't quite figured out exactly what I'm dealing with this with this robot thing. This this machine we're looking at seems to be referring to itself in the third person. It says Urshan, but it also seems to be referring to... The name Urshan seems to refer to a completely different person. Like, this one doesn't say... Isn't like a Bob Dole kind of thing where... Oh, Bob Dole. Bob Dole says we should do this. It's more of a... Um, it's having a conversation, and you're not hearing the other side of the conversation. And whom it is speaking to is Urshan. So, this character, we call it Urshan, but we're not looking at Urshan. Urshan is the being in which, a female being, in which it is speaking to. So, it gives me the weird feeling that we're dealing with a kind of a not a split personality kind of thing. Oops, sorry, I hit the microphone. Not a split personality kind of thing, but more of a um, two two minds in one body. It's not a mental disorder. There's literally two people inside of that, and yeah, I'm, I'm not. I'm not sure if I'm right about this, but. Two people inside of that one body, and they are all, and they, one has control of the body, and the other is just sort of a passenger. But the passenger is the boss, telling 
the body what to do. Well, anyway, it's, uh, it's 16 minutes in, so I don't want to start a dungeon run. Um, start a dungeon run that far in, so I'm going to move, uh, start that for the next episode. <laughs>